Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we're on a different kind of adventure again. I really enjoy sharing with you all pieces of history that stand out and can tell the stories of the past. I always say here on the channel that we need to learn from the past to make for a better tomorrow and sometimes we can learn from the very places that are around us that oftentimes go overlooked including cemeteries. That's right, today we're going to be learning from the past at a pioneer cemetery where there's actually a tragic story that will unfold before us. Today we are at the Henry Wickenburg Pioneer Cemetery. Now this cemetery, like many, tells stories of those who once inhabited the space. They called it home, they made it their own, and then something happened along the way where they were no longer here with us. But this one in particular actually has a very tragic memorial for a massacre that happened right here in Wickenburg, Arizona. This cemetery can be found in a strange place. Between two houses and a quiet neighborhood, you will find the path for the Henry Wickenburg Pioneer Cemetery. It seems as though it is almost forgotten based on its location. However, recent improvements show that people very much so are keeping the legacy of Henry Wickenburg alive. Wickenburg is best remembered for discovering the vulture mine and was the founder of Wickenburg, Arizona. Few people realize that he was largely responsible for the creation of the dusty little agricultural town now named Phoenix, considered to be one of the fifth largest cities in the United States. The boom towns of Vulture City and Wickenburg sprang up around the mine and there were rough mining camps throughout. These areas continued to grow and fully engulfed the area that is now considered to be the Phoenix proper area. Henry was a major contributor to the bankrolling of canal projects, which arguably are his most long lasting impactful accomplishment because these led to the inception of Phoenix being an inhabitable space. Henry died of a gunshot wound to the head on May 14, 1905. At the time of his death, it was ruled a suicide, although the circumstances were suspicious and many people at that time believed that he had in fact been murdered. He was buried in the Henry Wickenburg Pioneer Cemetery with five of his friends, including Henry Cowell, Lydia Cowell, James C. Todd, James Chase, and William Wise. This was considered to be a private cemetery at the time. It was located on the hill that was owned by Henry Wickenburg. It overlooked the river and the town, and it was considered to be the place that Wickenburg called home. Now that we've learned a little bit about the Founding Father and his final resting place, we can learn about the storied past of Wickenburg by moving to another site just a short distance up the road. It's important for us to go for each one of these little locations along the way because they teach us something about the fabric of the community around us. Wickenburg today would not be what it is without these faces and these names and these stories. And so as we talk about the past, we can make for a better tomorrow by having having these new brain wrinkles and celebrating these voices in a unique way. So now let's move on to the storied past of Wickenburg. Here you will find a sign that was placed by the Arizona Highway Department in 1937 that says Wickenburg Massacre. In this vicinity, November 5th, 1971, Wickenburg to Ehrenburg stage was ambushed by Apache Mojave Indians. Now again, they are claiming that it was the Apache and Mojave. However, they haven't actually deemed that they were completely at fault as there are so many questions that relate to this site. During the Wickenburg massacre, seven were left dead after a stagecoach was ambushed in the desert just west of Wickenburg. The Wickenburg massacre was an ambush and mass murder incident that occurred just outside of the community's bounds. The attack occurred on a westbound passenger stagecoach with eight souls on board. All but two passengers would die in the attack. The site today remains enshrined in a bit of a rumor and controversy. Witnesses and written reports dispute where the bodies ended up following the attack, and the exact location remains up for debate. Nevertheless, it's a sad story for all those that were involved. 
The attack occurred on the morning of November 5th, 1871. The stage left Wickenburg around 7 in the morning and was headed west through the washes out of town. It was set to travel on a mix of washes and the La Paz Road toward Ehrenberg on to the Colorado River and the final destination was the San Bernardino area of California. The driver and seven passengers on board were a diverse group of individuals. Several members of the traveling party were part of the Wheeler expedition and included a cartographer, surveyor, and also a Boston journalist. Three others included were from Prescott, which included a prostitute. The final passenger was a civilian army clerk. The lead horses were taken out, rendering the coach and the eight individuals to be sitting ducks. The driver and another male passenger who were sitting on top of the stage were likely killed immediately. Fifteen attackers closed in and the gunfire continued until the coach was hit 17 times. Two passengers somehow were able to escape into the wash and away from the attack, but did not go unscathed. Those two passengers were able to make it back into Wickenburg, where one of them would later die from complications of their injuries. Originally thought to be a raid by Apaches, it was later clarified that this was not the case, and the motives behind the Wickenburg Massacre remain unclear to this day. Now, if you are interested in finding this site or others, you can find these on a variety of different locations. I actually found this one on a history site for the Wickenburg area, and the site itself is located right next to the entrance for the Flyin' E Ranch. Here you can find this right alongside this busy highway. There is a pull-off here. I encourage you guys to come out and check it out for yourselves. Now, the location that we have driven to is thought to be along the path of where this might have been. Although the roads have changed, the washes have moved because of the people moving into this area, so it's a little harder to tell exactly where the site happened. It's also difficult to tell where exactly all of the bodies went from that point. And so today I wanted to show you this monument that was actually placed here in honor of those who were a part of that massacre. Again, every community has its stories. And starting off at the Pioneer Cemetery with the founding father and several other important people, it's important for us to see how the community was developed to create this place for this haven of stagecoaches and eventually others to come into this area. However, it's also important to look at the bad that's happened here. From the positive also comes the negative, and it's important for us to find the balance in each. It's also important for us to pay tribute and honor those who were senselessly killed in this situation, as their murders still are considered to be what we would now call a cold case.